On hills of Complexo do Alamão in Rio de Janeiro stands a cable car that once carried passengers from the favela to city. It reduced an initially hours-long journey to just 16 minutes. Now disused and decaying, it only works as a symbol of the colossal social inequality that surrounds Brazil's second largest city. Open to critical acclaim in 2011, Teleferico was part of a major citywide urban renewal program launched ahead of the 2016 Olympics. The 3.4km 6 station service provided much needed public transport to residents of some of Brazil's poorest slums. Today, however, Rio's Teleferico has been dissolved, inactive since the Olympics ended and the government withdrew its funding in 2016. The airlift is a typical Olympic ruin, according to Mariana Cavalconti, an associate professor at the Institute for Social and Political Studies at Rio de Janeiro State University. This ISNT the only ticket, ABC tells RNS return ticket. But this is a story that will help us understand much of what happened here before the Olympics. The 30-meter-tall Christ the Redeemer statue has been looking out over Rio from the top of Copacabana Mountain since 1931. A divided city Rio is famous for its postcard landscapes, gorgeous beaches, beautiful people known as cariocas, and of course, the party that ends all parties, the annual carnival. It's amazing, says Flavia Belliana Zimmerman, an international relations analyst at the University of Western Australia. Beauty and chaos. But Dr. Cavalconta says this is a view that represents only a small part of the city. In reality, Rio is a city torn by inequality, a long-standing problem in Brazil. In 2021, the richest 10% of Brazilians earned 41.5% of the country's income. The poorest 20% of the population earned just 3.3%. 6% of Brazil's population lives in slums, which are informal settlements usually located on the outskirts of major metropolitan areas. A fifth of the locals in Rio live in these neighborhoods. Many of Rio's slums were connected to the electricity grid and received municipal services, such as garbage collection, as part of major infrastructure development programs in the 80s and 90s. However, many still lack basic services such as transportation and sanitation. Drug trafficking is rampant in these poor communities, and hundreds of slums are under the control of criminal gangs. Home to 200,000 people, Rocinha in Rio de Janeiro's southern district is Brazil's most populated slum. Dr. Beliana Zimmerman says the effect is the juxtaposition of privilege and poverty that can be staggering. Then you look across the street and there's a slum where people live below the poverty line. People living in Rio's favelas, known as favelados, tend to be non-white and working class. The more European you look, the richer you are in Brazil, says Dr. Beliana Zimmerman. This inequality has its roots in Rio's colonial past. Between the 16th and 19th centuries, about 